Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, something a bit different. I'm going to be uh, fitting this Oxford Brute Force ground anchor. <laughs> Obviously you're mainly doing this because you're trying to uh, secure your bike from being taken in the event of anyone trying to steal it. But also you'll notice nowadays that uh, when you go to the insurance, if you tell them you've just fitted a chain, like a wrapped chain like this, through the back of your bike wheel or whatever, which used to be enough, and now they say you have to have the ground anchor like this. So yeah, I bought this Oxford Brute Force one. I bought it, um, I think it was only about, it was less than 20 quid. It just comes in a little box. Also, this, like I showed you just a minute ago, um, and in the box you get obviously the ground anchor. You then get two fixings like this with an Allen key screw on the top, so they're rule plugs. And then you get you get an Allen key like that, which goes into the head, the head of the screws like that. And then you also get two ball bearings. You see them in the bottom of the packet there, and a little punch. What you do is once you've installed the ground anchor in the floor, and you've screwed these in, these Allen keys in like that, you then smack the ball in the end and it stops anyone being able to undo them. You know, they're tamper-proof then pretty much. I've decided to go for this Oxford one mainly because you can stick, you can double up on the chain. So, so you can stick the chain through like that one way. But also if you've got another bike, which I have too, you can then run another chain. Obviously this is exactly the same one in this video, but you can see what I mean. You can, it's thick enough that you can run two chains through. So you can chain up two different bikes with the same ground anchor, so that's good. Yeah, some of that is what you want. Obviously, you get loads of different ones. You get some that have got like big rings, some that are literally just one plate of metal that's been bent into like horseshoe shape. But yeah, I've gone for this one. I'll get all the bits I need now, all the drill bits. They give you instructions, if I show you. They give you a set of instructions like this, look. Tells you exactly what to do. Basically, just putting this on the ground, marking the two holes, drilling it out with a big drill, away you go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill it with a small pilot hole first before I go in with the big drill because it's supposed to be a 16 mil, 16 mil hole you're supposed to drill. But I'm going to just mark it with a little pen. Now you can, you don't have to bolt these um, to the floor. You can bolt them to the wall, um, anything solid really. You can bolt them like that, um, you know, wherever you want, you could bolt it. But I'm going to do it on the floor just because it's just the most convenient for me. And I think it's just even harder for I want to try and put, you know, the, the ground is solid, so it should be pretty decent strength. So, in the instructions, that you basically want a depth of 68 mil, which is quite exact, so basically seven centimeters. This uh, pilot drill is probably not even seven centimeters long. No, it's five and a half, so I can drill it all the way down to start with, and then I'll get the big drill. So, here we go. There's the pilot holes. Quite a bit of dust when you're doing this, especially if you're drilling the concrete, so you might want to wear a mask. Now I've moved on to the 16 mil drill bit. I'm going to mark where seven centimeters is, so I know when I'm drilling the hole, how far down I need to go. Because I don't want to go through to Australia. Yeah, that should be. If you haven't got an STS drill, I highly recommend getting one. It goes through, you know, walls and concrete like butter, to be honest. So, there we go. So that's the drilling done. Both the bolts fit all the way down the holes. So that's ideal. Right now you need to put these here in. So they want to be tight-ish. Okay, give them a little tap with a hammer. Just like that. So they're flush. Same again with the next one. What will happen then is when you screw these in the taper at the bottom will pull up and it will just make them really tight. So there's the anchor. Luckily, I'm not sure if I've screwed them in correctly, which I have. They will line up, which they do. And you get your Allen key that's supplied. So yeah, basically the only thing they don't give you in the kit is they don't give you the drill bit or the drill, but obviously they can't be expected to give you that. If not, the kit would be a lot more money. So it probably is a specific torque you're supposed to do these up to, but from my experience of doing things in walls, you want to do them up tight, but you want to be careful because I mean, this concrete's super thick. This concrete's probably like, I don't know, three or four inches deep, I'd expect, but. But 
here I'm probably making a bit of a cracky noise, which will be where it's grabbing the concrete or the brick. So there we go, that is bolted in. Absolutely, you know, east side. And then, like I said, you can get your, uh, get your turn, whack it through, and the job's given. So I quickly wanted to mention about the ball bearings. So yeah, here they are, look. These are basically what makes it tamper-proof because they go in that hole like that. And then this is the punch that's supplied. So it's not there. And then you hit, pull it on there and you give it a smack. But what I would say is 100% double check. You're happy with where you've got it before you do that. Because if you hammer these balls in and then you realize, oh, actually I wanted it, you know, six inches over there. Um, obviously you'd have to redraw the holes or whatever, but at the moment you can still undo it. <laughs> but the second you put these these balls in, once you smack them balls in, you have hell of a time. You have to try and like grind. Well, that's the whole point. The tamper proof, the tamper proof uh, balls. But yes, just just double check that you're completely happy with where you've got it, uh, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm now going to drag my. Um, I'm going to put my other bike back in, put the chains around both, and just check that I'm happy with it all. And then once I am, I'll um, I'll tap the balls in. Now that's it. You're that is fully secure, and we'll not be going anywhere. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, I'll be doing some more bike videos soon. Probably a few to do with my bandit and uh, keep an eye on the channel. So see you then.